tātou. Uh, tēnā hoki koutou i tahi o ngā pakeke ko tai mai ki te whakano hoki ngā kōrero ki te tautoko hoki i te kaipuka. Uh, e mihi ana ki te Kairawhiti Environment Centre, ngā koutou tēnei whare e, e puare, tēnei hoi hoi ngā tātou. Uh, e mihi ana hoki ki a pia manu, uh, ngā hau te karanga ki a haro mai tātou i tēnei rau. Uh, me mai mahara hoki tātou ki ngā mate o te wā, uh, rātou ki a rātou tātou te hongo ora ki a tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, ko ai tēnei e tuake nei, ko pātanga pa te mauna, ko whare ka hika te awa, ko te whānoa tū whakairi ora, ko te whānoa te auto ki tēnei, uh, e mihi atu ki a koutou, ko ani pāhuru huri wai a wau. Uh, ko ai tētahi o ngā māngai, o ahika, te rotu ahika, o te maina, uh, e noho ana au ki rotu o whare ka hika, ki tā mātou papakainga i witea, i reira mātou ko aku tamariki, me taku māma, me aku tuakana, uh, e kāna te ahi ki te kaino. Nō reira tēnei au ka mihi, mihi atu ki a koutou katoa. Uh, thanks for the invitation today to kōrero a little bit about what's happening at home. Uh, I'm from a little place called Paradise, uh, Whare Kahika, otherwise known as uh, Hicks Bay. Um, if you don't know where that is, <coughs> uh, I've tried to find a map actually, but I think I might. Look up here, uh, we're here in Gisborne, I live up here just past Tealamore, <coughs> and uh, the red is happening over here. Okay, and um, I've come to share a little bit about what, what's going on at home. Um, <coughs> and I guess, oh, there's our little. This is these are these are some oh can we light a mouth from this? Mm, no. Sorry you can't see that very well, but those are my tamariki. A couple of my tamariki and a couple of our their cousins. Um, and that's them helping to clean up at lots of points. Um twenty on the 27th, should we? Not the 7th. On the 27th. On the 27th. Last week, we were cleaning up. So, um, it's about them, and it always has been for us. It's about them, our mukupuna, and their ability to continue to harvest from our kāpata kai. Um, when I became involved with this kaupapa about 20-odd months ago, it was because of the, the threat of deep-sea oil drilling in our neighbourhood. Um, the Petro race was coming and uh, wanting to put an oil rig up out on the SK on the Rai Kumara Basin. So as a mum of three, as a sister, as, a, as an auntie, as a, um, an educator, uh, I was really wild about the prospect of that and um, didn't know, have a clue about deep sea oil drilling or anything, but needed to get uh, the information fast and uh, try and rally up the whānau to do something about it. So we lit fires mm. on our beaches from Kamata <coughs> right down here through through the Tairawhiti down to uh, down here to Gisborne, and all of our hapu built our fires and lit them to show the world that we are absolutely against deep sea oil drilling. So I'm here today not as a political representative of anybody. In fact, those political reps that are here, you want my vote. And I want to know what you've got to say <coughs> in response to uh, what we've been going through at home. So, um, and I hope that's why a lot of the whanau are here. You know, you're going to get some, get it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, in terms of the political parties represented here. They're after your vote as much as they're after mine. And this is an opportunity to hear what they've got to say. That's not so, um, <coughs> yeah, okay, go away. Right. So, that's at Lawson Point. <coughs> Technical difficulty. You haven't paid yourself. No, and I'm not going to either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is the day after the oil, um, oil, the rena struck 
Tied up on one um, and then this is the this is two two weeks ago. And this was at um, Horoira on the East Cape at the Morai Matahi of the Cape. Um, <coughs> so if you've got, um, I'll draw a little picture for you. We've got um, Hicks Bay, oh, hang on. You'll have sort of um, Hicks Bay and like that, Tiara and it goes down like that, and you've got the lighthouse on the East Cape Island over there. Horoira is over here. And um, you got the island out there, from all kettle. This this info, this stuff was found from where the island is back to Matahi or Tite, which is about uh, five kilometres of coastline. And it was um, it was sponge heavily laden in oil. Um, this is a I'm told by the experts from Doc that this is a molly hole. Um, or a juvenile albatross. These are deep sea birds that fly great distances and they sit on the water for rest. And these birds are getting caught up in the oil. So the, uh, when I saw this was the, when I saw this, I just wanted to tangi for this money and for all the other money. This, this, this really got me wild about what was happening and the impact that it was having on our coast. And this is what the stuff that they've been, they were picking up <coughs> was um, that that's the foam from inside that, that lines the containers and this is what's been washing up on the shore at home. And our kids were out there that morning because it had only just arrived. They, they, this, this boy's mum had found the container in the first place the day before. They'd gone, they were going, decided to go to Disneyland, East Cape, and went out and found a container all broken and smashed and um, this is what they were picking up on the shore. So it was just blowing up out of the, out of the waves onto the rocks. Black, about that, you know, various sizes of black soaked sponge or foam. <coughs> and then people were going into the local store <coughs> and taking in their, their things they found on the beach. Um, this is one of our girls who's been heard her, her mother and I be active, really active as, uh, over the last 20 months and she's been seeing all of this. So this cousin brings in this uh, hunk of foam, oil covered foam, and she gets into action. She pulls out her signs and she puts her chair up, displays it all, and she writes a panui. Oh. This is what will happen if we allow mining in our New Zealand shores, no mining. And everybody who came past the shop, she would stop and talk to them and go, you know, this is why we don't want deep sea oil drilling. Keep them out. You know, and she's um, 12. Oh. Came out the right, very proud. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lawson Point, uh, Fucker City. And this is a primo diving spot. This is one of our main car parts of Kai. This really, really is a supermarket, like pack and safe, because you've got your snapper section, you've got your tarapiti <laughs> section, you've got your pawa and kina in various areas, and you've got koda as well. You can fish for um, uh, kingfish here. You, you know, it, it is a, uh, a diver's paradise, and as well as fishermen. Fisher people go here. Um, this is what was found. This is the whole side of a container. This was found at Matakino Smith's house. Um, there's a steep drop to her place just below, behind here. They've had to pull this up with a, with a tractor. Um, Matikino and her family were cleaning up by themselves for a good four days. No safety gear. Her and her kids were up to their arms in oil. Uh, there was, oh, don't touch it because it's toxic. Well, she was only concerned about cleaning up the cupboard that she's lived off and her family have lived off for generations. So, um, she tells me that her girl's been having a few headaches and a bit lightheaded and those types of things um, since, since dealing with the cleanup. Uh, but that's the kind of rubbish that they were finding out there at Lawson Point. This is my son and he's pulling off, I can't really see it from there, but that's a deer pelt, rotten, stinking deer pelt that's come out of the containers. I'm told there are about 1,300 found altogether. Matakino found 12 around her area. We found uh, three that day that we were out there. So um, 
and all of this, these deer pelts are coming in, they're getting stuck on the rocks, stuck under the rocks, um, and you just have to pull them out. It's not a very nice job. Uh, this is at Mata Kenil's house, the, the stuff that they found in a day. Um, so it's all that yellow foam that lines the container, as well as um, she found two penguins um, and butter. Whanga Parawa has gone into the butter business. It's like a whole container full of butter. <coughs> and timber. Quality export timber. But um, no, the butter is, um, is, in this case with Mati's, that she found was, was putrid. It was all rancid and off. So this is what we're finding on the beaches, or we were finding on the beaches, and it's, um, again, it's that foam, it's covered in oil, and sticking to it is the, is the deer hair, hair from the, what do you call it, hair or fur, anyway, the deer stuff, with the pelts, um, which is it's kind of helpful because we noticed that with the, with the hair floating in the water, the oil was sort of being attracted to it, which made it easier to identify and to scoop up and get rid of. Um, so, so that was helping us out a bit. Oh, look, there's that. Don't frack with our planet. You know, I like that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> those, those are just a sampling of the photos that I've, that I've bought. And um, I mean, here in Hicks Bay, we were kind of lucky because the north, the northwest of wind is what brought all the rubbish in. Um, and from Tauranga Moana, the northwest of wind, come straight across Matakawa Point. We had some oil out at Matakawa Point, then it came straight across to Te Araro and Koroira, and missed, Hicks, missed Farikahika, missed Hicks Bay, but we still treat the water as, <coughs> as toxic, or potentially toxic. So, um, and our, our tipuna say that there's a, there's a current called Te, te Arakawika or Paikia, and it's the, it's the current that our tipuna Paikia came, came on, um, when he came from Hawaii, either on the whale or in the form of the whale, depending on which one, which which version you subscribe to, um, and, and Paikia came on those currents. That's what brought him to our shores. And it's also the same currents that the fish follow, um, that the Kona walk. Uh, they all come on that on that current. So the nor'easter winds brought it into us. The southerlies take the rubbish out from us. And um, I've heard, I heard this morning, money might be able to confirm it or not, but that there was some oils out at Waipero Bay in Topomaru Bay uh, that the Fana had found over the last couple of days. So that's come even, if that's the case, then it's come <coughs> around the corner and it's come down here. Is it there now? That's what I'm told the from some of the Whanau. The report. The reports that I got were people had seen a slip from um, what they thought was a slip from Port Awanui to uh, Tuparo, um, and that had been notified yesterday. And Maritime New Zealand sent a plane that fly o flew over it yesterday and said it was an algal bloom, so it, that wasn't a slip. Oh, I'm just as bad. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, at the moment at home we've got a rahui on, which for those of you who don't know, a rahui is, a, is a, a, a ban on the taking of any shellfish at the moment. It's a cultural ban. Um, so some of the whanau are saying, oh, but what's the point? You know, people, commercial fishermen are still out there. They're still doing their thing. Why can't we go and take from our car? And they say, well, we don't have any legal jurisdiction over anyone. But we're concerned about the safety, the health and safety of our people. We can't stop you from going, you can go, but we don't have any um, control over people, what people choose to do or not. They put their own, their own risks, their own